Our reaction is pouring into Ohio after lawmakers there overrode the governor's veto of a ban on gender surgeries for minors. The ACLU of Ohio said the override of the veto was, quote, a shameful legislative act. We will do everything we can to fight this. Aaron Baer, the president of the Center for Christian Virtue, applauded the override, saying in part, quote, no child is born in the wrong body, no matter what powerful and well-funded lobbyists say. And Aaron Baer, president of the Center for Christian Virtue, joins us. Now, Aaron, great to be with you. First off, I know you said that this marks, quote, a turning point for Ohio. What did you mean by that? You know, really, it's been about six years now that this issue has come to the forefront in Ohio. It was actually started down in Cincinnati when a, a Catholic family came forward and said that Cincinnati Children's Hospital was threatening to take their child away from them because they wouldn't consent to putting her on high-dose testosterone. From that point forward, so many Christians were stepping up and advocating, saying, we have to stop this. And this was a groundswell that got us to the place, not just to pass it, but then to override a veto. It sent a powerful message that we're going to let, not let our, our uh, kids be experimented on anymore in Ohio. Yeah, were you surprised uh, that the state Senate overrode the governor's veto? And what's been the reaction so far in the state to this? You know, really, we weren't surprised by the by the uh, veto override. It was the veto that really surprised us in the first place, because the reality is this bill has broad support. I mean, you look at the polling on there, 70 percent of folks don't think boys should be playing in girls sports. You know, stopping trans medicine on kids is about as equally as popular. Uh, and so when the veto came, there was such a groundswell, such such a, an outcry against it uh, that we felt really confident that this was going to happen. And we were going to be able to celebrate today that kids are protected. Yeah, and Governor DeWine said, um, you know, when he vetoed, vetoed this bill, HB 68, it was because it, it was about, quote, protecting human life. Take us through what happened from that time uh, when he vetoed it and also yesterday's override. I mean, do you think there is a blueprint for other states when it comes to this? Absolutely. You know, really, Governor DeWine was relying on junk science being pushed by children's hospitals that have a massive profit motive to be able to sterilize kids. Uh, the reality is we see these suicide rates starting to skyrocket when these gender clinics start. I mean, the, the puberty blocking drug alone, one of the listed side effects is suicide ideation. It's crazy to believe their lies on this. And that's really what we see the groundswell happening all over the country. You know, Senator Christina Rogner gave a floor speech and, and put it so uh, simply that boys are boys and girls are girls. And we don't don't need to be afraid to proclaim that. And when we can start speaking that simple truth, that's where this is going to spread across the nation. Aaron, um, as we said, the ACLU, and as you know, says they're going to continue to fight this. What do you think comes next? I mean, do you think this is going to end up in court? Yeah, you know, what we will see, the reality is the uh, state of Tennessee passed a very similar bill, and the Sixth Circuit upheld it. Now, other circuits have, have struck down similar bills, but Ohio is in the Sixth Circuit. So if the ACLU wants to bring a lawsuit, you know, our, our attorney general here, Dave Yost, has already basically said, bring it on. I'm going to defend this because it's the right thing to do. And no, no parent has the right to abuse their child with these sterilizing drugs. And so we're ready to fight on that hill. But our hope is that the ACLU just leaves kids alone uh, and lets this law goes in, go into effect. Almost out of time, but quickly, I do want to ask you this. We know that Ohio is a pivotal state in the race for the White House. How is the pro-life movement and the battle against gender ideology, how is it going in Ohio, and how do you see this all playing out in the 2024 election? You know, really, Ohio has elected people like J.D. Vance and has really come behind President Trump uh, multiple times now because we're just we just need common sense. Right. I think that was a, the reason a lot of folks misread why uh, President Trump had so much support here is because he spoke plainly and about common sense issues. And this is one of those. And so anybody that wants to win Ohio has got to learn that lesson. We're going to leave right there. Aaron, great to be with you. Thank you so much for your insights. Appreciate it. God bless. Thank you.